Shavuot Tov Rabotai, we are continuing with our Mishnah Yomim, Masechet Shabbat. We are up to Perek Vav Mishnah Bet. Today's Mishnah should be Le'ilu Nishmat, Neria Ben Svedlana, Aran Baev, Neriyao Ben Burcha Yisraelov, Menuchatam Began Eden, Amen. The Mishnah lists items that a man may not wear outside on Shabbat. Lo Yetzeh Ha'ish Basandal Hamsumar. A man may not go outside wearing nailed sandals, which the Mephoshim explained. These are wooden sandals whose parts are held together with iron nails that protrude a bit. Now, there's no concern that one might take off these sandals and carry them. Nevertheless, the rabbis prohibited wearing them because of a tragic event. The Rav explains a group of people wearing such sandals once gathered in a cave to hide from enemies. When they heard noises from above, they panicked, fearing that they had been discovered and ran to escape. In the stampede that followed, many were killed because of the nails in their sandals. To prevent similar tragedies, the rabbis prohibited wearing these sandals outside on special days when people gathered together such as Shabbat and Yom Tov. Velo bayahid bizman shen or only one sandal of any sort if he does not have a wound on his other foot that prevents him from wearing two. Now, the rabbi explains, since he can wear both sandals, People will laugh at him for wearing only one and he might take it off and carry it. Therefore, he may not go outside wearing only one sandal. However, if one foot is wounded and he cannot wear both sandals, no one will laugh at him and so he may, he may just, he may wear just one. Velo bat filin, a man may not go outside with tfilin, which the Tosfid Yom Tov explains because if he needs to relieve himself, he will remove the tefillin and carry them, which is a violation of Shabbat. Some give a different reason, since there is no mitzvah to wear tefillin on Shabbat, one who, carry, one who wears them is considered to be carrying them. Or an amulet, if it was not made by an expert. Now the Mephoshim explained it, Kamiya an amulet is a piece of parchment with prayers and holy names written on it. A sick person wears it around his neck like jewelry in the hope that it will heal his disease. And the Mishnah says if it was not made by an expert, he may not wear it. And the Mephoshim explained an expert in this context is someone who has already healed three people with his amulets. To a sick person, the amulet of an expert is like clothing. The amulet of a non-expert, however, is considered a masoy, a burden. Velo bashirion, velo bekasda, velo magafaim, or a coat of armor, a helmet, or iron leg plates. Because the Rav explains these are worn in battle. Now, just like in the case of nailed sandals, there is no concern that he might remove these items and carry them. Nevertheless, people might suspect him of going off to battle, which is forbidden on Shabbat, except in cases of emergency, to avoid the appearance of wrongdoing, what we call marit ayin. The rabbi is prohibited wearing these items, as Rashi explains in Masechet Shabbat, page 64b. The Mishnah concludes, V'im yatsa eno hayav chatat, but if he went outside wearing any of these items on Shabbat, he is not liable to bring a chatat offering because wearing any of these things, the Mephoshim say, is not considered carrying by biblical law, only rabbinic, and therefore you would not bring a sacrifice. Now, the previous, that is the end of Mishnah Bet. Mishnah Gimel now discusses the previous two Mishnah listed things that the rabbis prohibited one to wear outside on Shabbat. The following two Mishnayot, Mishnah 3 and 4, list things that are forbidden by the Torah. Today we're only going to do Mishnah 3. Lo and Nikuva. A woman may not go outside on Shabbat wearing a sewing needle that has a hole for threading, which the Mephoshim explained, a needle that is used for sewing is not considered jewelry. Therefore, even if a woman wears a pin to her clothing, she may not go outside with it on Shabbat because biblical law regards it as a masoya burden. Now, this term is used even for an object that's worn. If it's not considered clothing or jewelry, we're going to call it a burden, a masoy. Vilo betabat chutam, or a signet ring that has a stamp for sealing letters. Now, a ring that is used for stamping letters is also considered a carried item, even if a woman wears it on her finger, since women do not wear such rings as jewelry. Vlo bakulyar, or a circular band around the head, which the Rav explains was a decorative item shaped like a large ring or a crown, which a woman would fit around her head, is not considered clothing or jewelry because most women do not go outside wearing it. Velo bakovelet, velo bitzlochit. Shel pal yaton, or a spice container, or a bottle of perfume hanging from her neck, which the Rav explains. A woman would hang these items from her neck to conceal body odor. Such an item is not considered clothing or jewelry and may not be worn outside on Shabbat. 
If she went outside, if she went out to the public domain wearing any of these things on Shabbat, she is liable to bring a chatat offering. This is the opinion of Rabbi Meir. Now the Mephoshim explains, since none of these items is considered clothing or jewelry, they are forbidden burdens, and so a woman is liable for wearing them on Shabbat. Now although she is not actually carrying them, for example, it's in her hand, or um, for example, in her hand or pocket, if it's not, in her hand or pocket, that still does not exempt her from liability because wearing these objects is the normal way of carrying them. So even though she's not actively carrying them, like in her hand or pocket, wearing them would be considered carrying them because they're burdens. Halachically. And this is the opinion of Rabbi Meir. V'chachamim potrin bakovelet ubitzlochit shel palyaton, but the sages say that she is exempt from biblical liability if she went out to the public domain with a spice container or a bottle of myrrh or perfume hanging from her neck. Now the sages hold that when a woman wears things to conceal body odor, they are regarded as jewelry like the amulet worn for healing we mentioned in Mishnah 2. She is not allowed to wear them only because of a rabbinic concern that she might remove them to show a friend and carry them in a Rishud HaRabim. Since they are not biblically prohibited in the opinion of the sages, a woman who wore them is exempt from having to bring a chatat offering. The sages, however, agree that a woman who wears the other things listed in the Mishnah is biblically liable. Rabbi Meir, on the other hand, rules that even things worn to hide body odor are not considered jewelry and is, it is biblically forbidden for her to wear them outside on Shabbat. Now the Rab does tell us, the the opinion of the sages, that the Kovelet and the Bitzlochit Shel Palyaton, the spice container or a bottle of myrrh, perfume hanging from her neck, it's biblically permitted but rabbinically forbidden. And that is in Rabotai of today's Mishnah Yomi. Everybody have a Shavuot Tov. Amen v'amen.